On day one, I spawned in as a baby golden warden. Whoa, I'm in an ancient city too. And I can see? I thought wardens were blind. And I had 25 hearts. Mom, is that you? He's golden. The spell worked. The ancient city. It's totally destroyed. Mom, what's going on? Son, you need to run and hide quick. I wanted to ask questions, but I listened to my mom and ran off to hide. The last warden. Any final words? You'll never get away with this. You're too late. <laughs> spells and killed my mom. No! I had to flee the ancient city to get away from him. Lucky for me, I ran into an abandoned mine shaft. I started to mine the wood to create a crafting table and wooden pickaxe. Once I had a wooden pickaxe, I went over to mine some stone. I then upgraded my wooden pickaxe to a stone pickaxe. I wanted to return to the ancient city and try to find other wardens, but in my panic, I lost my way. I was starving and losing hearts quickly. I knew that my mom was gone, but I had to survive. I needed to find food, but where would I find food in a cave? I searched for a long time, and just before my health ran out, I found a patch of mushrooms. I quickly crafted a wooden bowl and created mushroom stew. It wasn't much, but it'll do for now. I was getting tired, so I found a nice open cave. Whoa, this place looks amazing. I started to construct my base. It wasn't much, but I guess it'll have to do for day one. On day two, I woke up to what sounded like bone crackling outside. It made my ears hurt. I quickly went back into my base and crafted a stone sword and started fighting them off. That's for my mom, you annoying pest. I decided to explore the cave more and see what other materials I can find. I found a large vein of coal in the mine. Nice. This is just what I need to stop those pesky mobs from spawning again. I also noticed my rooftop. It looks like a lush part of the cave. There could be food here. I was getting ready to explore when I was attacked by a group of cave spiders. Oh man, I hate spiders. These guys are a little more tough than the skeletons because they inflicted poison damage. Those spiders are still no match for me. I was the strongest mob in the game. I quickly took them out, but my sword broke already. I just crafted it. I was getting annoyed with these mobs. I returned home to my base and crafted the coal into torches. I lit the area outside my base with the torches to stop mobs from spawning. Then, I crafted some chests from the spare wood I had, and even some furnaces. I always want to be prepared for when I find iron. By this time, it was getting late, and I was still sad about my mom. Am I really the last warden ever? On day three, I woke up, and I was starving. I had no food left. I decided it would be best to venture to the surface and try to find food there. I made my way out of the cave, finally, and found myself in a forest. Whoa, I must be the first warden to ever see the overworld. Whoa, look at all this wood. I took some time to gather a few logs, as I knew I would need it later. I made my way across the forest and ran into a hay bale village. I went to the farm and started to steal their food. Suddenly, I heard an iron golem and he started to attack me. I had to defend myself and I took him down. I used the iron from the iron golem to craft a bucket. I knew that this was going to be helpful for my farm. I took the time to loot the rest of the village. I was approached by another golem, but this one was different. Hey, what are you doing? Sorry, man. I have to do what I have to do. I'm on a mission to avenge my mom. I noticed that a villager was coming in, so I hid quickly. <laughs> it must have been a cow. He looked like he was about to attack the straw golem. I jumped out and roared at the villager. He ran away after one look at me. <laughs> hey man, these villagers don't treat you right. Why don't you come back to my base and live with me? That would be sweet. My name's Mr. Bale. I took Mr. Bale back to my base and built him a small little house to live in. On day four, I woke up to growling outside my base. I went outside to check and a group of feral wolves were attacking him. How did you guys even get down here? This is no place for a wolf. I fought them off and protected Mr. Bale. Wow, most mobs don't treat others the way I do now that I have sight. After fighting off the wolves, I left the cave and grabbed some dirt. I brought it back and began building a farm with some of the food I'd gathered from the village. I want to make sure I have enough food for myself and Mr. Bale, plus any other helpless mobs that need a place to stay. I'm really starting to take pride in helping others now, especially since I can see and they aren't so scary looking. Wow, base is coming along nicely. I took the time to expand the base and created a storage room. Here, I can place all the loot I was going to gather. I then decided I needed to upgrade my tools. I took the time to finally explore the cave, and in my surprise, I found some iron. Sweet, this is just what I'm looking for. It's not that much, but it'll do. I decided the best thing to do with this was to craft an iron sword so I can better defend myself and my friends. I returned home to the base and went to bed for the night. On day five, I must have eaten something weird because I had the craziest dream. I was in an ice biome on a mountain standing next to a giant ice temple. A guy ran up and he charged the four blocks in the center of the temple. Hey, uh, what are you doing? Just then, the Night King spawned and he killed him. You, you're alive. Who are you and what do you want? I am the Night King. I will not let some stupid prophecy stop me. Prophecy? What are you talking about? I'm gonna get you for what you did to my mom. Looks like I will have to kill you for my dream eternal night can be completed. Never. I will grow strong enough so that you will never be able to stop me. I'm coming for 
for you. As he went to attack, I woke up in a panic. Wow, was that a dream or a vision? All I know is I'm gonna have to stop that Night King once and for all. On day six, I ventured out of my cave to clear my head. Last night was strange, and I had this feeling it wasn't just a dream. As I was wandering around, I came across a herd of sheep that were being attacked by a giant tarantula. Oh, I hate spiders. My instinct to protect kicked in, and I jumped into action. The tarantula was quick, and they packed a punch. I was only down to a few hearts. Suddenly, I felt a great energy come within me. Whoa! My sonic boom! And the tarantula was down. Just then, I felt something strange happen. I grew into a full-sized warden, and I even got 50 hearts. After my dream, I decided that this fight was bigger than me. I wanted to help everyone, so I went to talk to the sheep. Hey guys, are you all okay? No problem. It's what I do. How about you come back and live with me? I took the sheep back to my base. I started placing more dirt. And once I did that, I started planting and expanding my farm inside the cave so I can feed my new friends. I built a quick shelter for my new friends to live in. That will work. On day seven, I woke up to some disgusting noises outside my base. I rushed out and saw prowlers attacking it. I had never seen any mob like this before. It looked demonic and attacked really hard. I was about to fight them off, but this was a struggle. These guys were definitely stronger than any other Minecraft mob. Eventually though, I took them down. What was that thing that was definitely way stronger than a minecraft mob i better be more careful who knows what else is waiting for me out there it made me think i'm gonna need some upgrades i searched deeper into the cave to find more iron my iron sword was good and all but i knew i was gonna need more upgrades as i was looking i ran into a bunch of zombies the zombies were no match for me especially now being full size they only took a few hits of my sword and they were no more i found a bunch of iron ore this time and started to smelt it i was able to craft all the iron tools i even used the leftover iron to craft myself some iron boots wow i just wish more mobs felt the same way i did and only fought back when they had to. On day eight, I ventured out of my base to see if any other mobs were in need of my help. I had this feeling that I was given my sight for a reason. I couldn't stop thinking about that dream. As I was crossing out of the forest and into the birch flower forest biome, I saw a baby deer all alone. Hey, what's up, little guy? Did you lose your family? Do you know which way they went? He pointed me into the right direction, and I headed off to save his family. As I crossed over the hill, I was attacked by a coyote. The coyote was quick, but I was easily able to overpower him. I knew I had to be close, and it wasn't much farther until I ran into the pack of them. They had the deer parents with them. I rushed into action to save them. I was able to use my sonic boom to take them down. Hey guys, come back with me. I can build you some shelter and give you protection. The deers agreed, and I brought them back to my base. Once I was there, I built them a nice shelter to live in. I wanted to make the base more like where they were used to living, so I gathered some water and made a small pool. I'm off to a great start. On day nine, I decided it was time to travel back to where I was born to see if there are any other clues as to why there were no other wardens. I saw an ancient chest across a room filled with traps. I needed to know what was inside. I found an ancient warden helmet. When I put it on, it felt like my yell was getting stronger. Whoa, check it out. My sonic boom is gold now. I wonder if there are any other ancient warden tools. After my parkour journey, I stopped to mine some more iron and even collected some lapis. Never know when this is gonna come in handy. I smelted the iron and used it to craft an iron pair of pants. Wow, not comfortable but at least I'm protected. It was a good thing I finished my iron because a group of giant bats attacked me. I was able to fight them off, no problem. I had a feeling I was getting closer to where I was born. On day 10, I finally made it back to where I was born. Hello? Is there anyone here? It's even more destroyed than the last time. What is going on? I decided to take a look around and looted the chests. Inside the chest, I found some coal and bones and glow berries. Nice, another yummy fruit. I opened another chest and I found something strange. It was a warden pickaxe. This must have been left here for a reason. Just as I was about to leave, a skeleton deer appeared, causing a huge disturbance. What are you doing here? Ah, the last of the wardens. I was hoping I would find you here. My boss is going to be very happy I found you. Your boss? Are you working with the Night King? When the time is right, the eternal darkness will be upon us. I choose to fight for the winning side. I'm gonna stop you and the Night King from turning this world into darkness. I can promise you that. I jumped at him to fight, but he quickly vanished. Was it another dream? No, it couldn't be. He mentioned something about his boss wanting to hear about me. Oh no. I hope this isn't related to the Night King. On days 11 to 12, I returned to my base with my loot from the ancient city. I began by expanding my base as well as expanding the shelters for the sheep and deer friends. I even took the time to add some hay bales to Mr. Bale's room to make him feel more comfortable. After that, I told Mr. Bale about the fire deer and what he said about his boss and my kind. It sounds oddly familiar to what your dream was. Maybe you should go and find out if the dream was real or not. Good luck, Fozo. That's a great idea, Mr. Bale. I gathered supplies and prepared to leave, but before I left, I wanted to make sure the 
base was protected while I was gone. I dyed some of my sheep yellow and sheared their wool. I then got started on what would be a giant golden warden. That way, if any mobs came to my base, they would know who owns it and not to mess with it. On days 13 to 14, I went out traveling. I came across biome after biome, but I knew eventually that I would reach the Arctic biome. And look at that. There it was. After a long journey, I finally saw it. The mountain from my dream. This is where the dream took place. As I made it to the top of the mountain, I could make out the temple. It was all real. Just then, from a distance, I saw the Night King approaching his tower. Oh no. Better hide before he spots me. But it was too late. Where do you think you're going, Golden Warden? Uh, nowhere. Look while you can. When the time is right, everyone will live in darkness. I won't let that happen. It was written to be my destiny. You are the only one standing in my way. And seeing you now, I have nothing to worry about. Weakling. I'm not weak. You're the weak one. I protect this world, and I won't let you hurt anyone. I tried to use my sonic boom on him, but he was able to dodge it. The Night King cast a spell on me, and it threw me straight out of the Arctic biome. On days 15 to 16, I landed in a jungle biome. I was totally lost now. I knew I had to make my way back to my base and get stronger. Otherwise, the world was going to be doomed by the Night King. I started to make my journey out of the jungle, but I had this terrible feeling I was being followed by something. I turned around and finally was able to make out a monster I've never seen before. It was some sort of mutated plant. The plant was able to summon spikes from the ground at all distances. I did my best to avoid the spikes while shooting back at him with my sonic boom. Once I took some of his health down, he started throwing razor sharp leaves and acid bombs at me. Wow, this guy was tough. It took all my power to take him down, but I was finally able to. These mobs are getting tough. I wonder if this is the Night King's doing. He weakened me quite a bit. I needed to find food or I wasn't going to make it back to my base. There was a group of cows and I thought about taking them out for food, but I decided I would protect these mobs and couldn't. I searched the jungle until I was able to find some melons. I ate a few of them and they were extremely good. I collected more. So when I returned to my base, I can plant them and grow them. On day 17 to 18, since I was still in the jungle, I decided I would collect some of the wood and add it to my base. I really liked the color of the wood and thought it would look great for an accent. As I was wandering through the jungle, I came across a parrot who looked like he needed help. Hey, what's going on with you? <laughs> Do you know where they are? I can help you with that if you can help me afterwards. <laughs> The parrot sent me in a direction, and I eventually found the group of boar that had been attacking his family. Hey, you need to stop attacking these parrots. They weren't much of talkers and charged directly at me. I was able to outpower them with my strength and sonic boom attack. I returned to the parrot and asked if he would be able to tell me which way the planes were so I can head home. He told me to follow him and brought me to a clearing. He told me to go on my own from here. I thanked him and invited him back to my base, but he politely declined. I respected his decision and headed off. On days 19 to 20, I crossed out of the jungle and made my way into a planes biome that felt more familiar to me. I must be getting close to home. I wasn't far along when I heard a cry for help. I looked around, but couldn't see anyone. So I just headed off towards the noises. I came across a baby wither being attacked. It looked like he was being attacked by an undead mob. I knew I had to help. I jumped in and started a fight. These monsters are getting tougher and tougher, but no matter what, I was able to defeat him with a few good shots. Hey, little guy, where's your family? I decided to take the wither back to my base, as he would be safer there. When I returned home, I quickly told Mr. Bale that the Night King was growing more powerful, and I was gonna have to stop him. I then built a tiny hut for the baby wither to spend his time in, while I searched for his parents. After I decided to add some jungle logs and jungle planks to my base, it looked a lot nicer. I planted some melon seeds, and brought water down, and expanded my pool. I decided to call it a day, and got to sleep. On days 21 to 23, I woke up, and knew I needed to return the baby wither to his family. I felt his pain of feeling alone in the world. I asked him to destroy described the monster that had chased him away, and I quickly realized he was describing the fire deer. I knew he had to be stopped. I left my cave and headed into the direction of the mountains. While I was searching, the fire deer appeared and approached me. You're a monster for what you've done to this world and these families. I do as my boss commands. The Night King has asked me to find stronger mobs to join him. Withers were once strong, but they're no match for me. I am the strongest mob, and I'm way more powerful than the Night King will ever be. I will stop you from destroying this world. In time, we will see. But first, you have to defeat this. The fire deer summoned a hideous demon and vanished. The demon attacked me, and he hit extremely hard. This was by far my hardest test yet. Luckily for me, he was not that fast, and I was able to avoid most of his attacks. After a long battle, I was able to finally bring him down. Whoa, I had a hundred hearts. Wow, these mobs are getting stronger and stronger, but so am I. On days 24 to 26, I was further up the mountain until I saw a large bear charging at me. I prepared myself for a fight, but the bear wasn't looking for one. The bear told me that his family was 
mess with by the fire deer as well. Does a group of withers live on this mountain? <laughs> I asked him if he could tell me where they were. The bear told me they lived on a higher peak further into the biome. I thanked him once again and gave him the coordinates to my base if he wanted to come back and live there. I must have been traveling for a long time because it was starting to get dark. I spotted a cave and made my way inside for the night. I found some iron and coal and was able to finish my set of iron armor. Now I'm big and protected. My celebration didn't last long because suddenly I was attacked by a group of creepers. I kept them away with my sonic boom and I was able to take them out with ease. I need to be more careful where I go. This world is definitely dangerous. On days 20 to 29, I left the cave that I'd spent the night in and continued along my journey toward the Wither's home. As I was traveling, I came across a group of goats that looked stranded in the mountains. They told me that there were evil mobs that were patrolling this area. I gave them the coordinates to my base so they can travel there and be safe from these monsters. I traveled further up the mountain and finally I saw the monster that had been terrorizing the goats. It was a massive creature that attacked me instantly. There was no doubt that he was a minion of the fire deer. He was tough, but my powers had grown immensely and with my new armor, I was taking such little damage. Damage. I fought him off for what felt like an eternity. Finally, I was able to take him down with the final sonic boom. I reached the peak where the bears said the withers lived, but there was no withers in sight. Suddenly, I got hit by a wither skull. Wait, no, stop. I found your baby. You found my child? Where is he now? He's at my base, safe and sound. I came here looking for you to return him. We were attacked by the fire deer. He killed my wife and separated me from my child. Don't worry. I can take you to my base and return him to you. We left together and started the journey back home. On days 30 to 32, I returned home with the Wither's father. I reunited the two, and he thanked me for taking care of his kid. Before he left, I asked him if he knew anything that would be able to help me defeat the Night King. The legend of the Night King was told to me as a child. Really? I never knew he was real until now. We might all be in trouble. He told me that he was going to turn this world into darkness. Do you know anything about that? There is a legend of a witch who lives in a swamp not too far from here. I believe she is the key for unlocking your ultimate power and defeating the night king. I thanked the wither for the information and asked him to stay, but he didn't want to. Since I was home, I took the time to get all my new friends settled in. I created a nice shelter for all the goats to live in. <laughs> And I also decided to dig out a little bit of the cave area to give the bears a nice home. They definitely were way too big to live in a shelter like the other creatures. <laughs> Don't mention it, guys. Finally, I decided to make more progress on my Golden Warden statue. It was really starting to take shape now. On days 33 to 35, I set off in search of the witch's hut. The journey began with me crossing a large desert. On my way across the desert, I saw a group of husks in the sunlight. Wow, you guys are like zombies, but can survive in the day. They attacked me. You guys are just like zombies. I had to fight them off. At this point, they're really no match for me. And I was able to take them down easily. Why does everything in this world just want to attack me? I headed further into the desert and came across a desert temple. I decided to loot it and found some diamonds. I crafted them into a diamond sword. And before I left, I took the TNT from the temple. This may come in handy later. Right outside the desert temple was a village. And I started to make my way over until the sky changed colors and it became dark. The Night King appeared and started to attack the village. I wanted to help. Help, but I was too far away. By the time I arrived, the Night King was gone and everything had been destroyed. I must stop this monster from hurting anyone else. On days 36 to 38, I entered the swamp and began my search for the witch's hut. I wasn't very far into the swamp when I was attacked by an undead mob. It seems like everywhere I go, I'm always under attack by some kind of minion of the fire deer. I fought him off as best as I could. One more good hit and down they went. I feel like I'm ready to take on anything, but I should find this witch to make sure of it. After a little bit more traveling, I made it to the witch's hut in the swamp. Hi, my name is Fozo. I was told that you might have the answers I need to help me defeat that Night King. The witch didn't say a word. She just stared at me and then threw a potion at me. It started to poison me. Ow, that hurt. I quickly took her out. Well, I hope that wasn't the witch. A slime from nearby overheard me talking to myself. It came over. I was told to find a good witch in the swamp. Do you know where she is? Oh, well, thank you for the help. I really appreciate it. On days 39 to 41, I arrived at the center of the swamp. And before me stood a massive witch's hut. That slime wasn't kidding. This is much better than the other place. I ran inside the hut and called out for the witch. Hello? Are you here? I heard no response. So I decided to take a look around. Hmm. Well, maybe one of her chests is something that can help me. As I started to search the chest, the witch returned. Hey, it's not what you think. The wither sent me here to see if you can help me defeat the Night King. Ah, yes. Fozo. I was expecting you. Expecting me? But how? It is all part of the Night King's prophecy. He will return and create eternal darkness over the world. But the strongest mob 
with a heart of gold will defeat him. I always wondered why I was the Golden Warden. I want to fulfill my destiny and save everyone. Where do I start? Start by collecting three spider eyes. I'm on it. I ventured out into the swamp so I can collect the spider eyes. I had to kill several of them until I finally was able to get all three that the witch had requested. Here are the spider eyes you wanted. So now can you show me how to gain my ultimate power? What? No, I just need these for a potion. The real quest will be much more difficult. Then why did you have me collect these? Travel to the Badlands and locate the temple. There you will find the golden eye. Bring it to me and I will show you what you need to see. On days 42 to 44, I returned home to my base. I made sure to drop off all the loot that I gathered. The witch had mentioned the mission was going to be more difficult, so I took the time to go and find some diamonds. I mined away for them, and was able to find enough to craft some diamond boots and tools. I was about to head back to my base when a group of skeletons attacked me. They were no match for me at this point, and I took them down. Really upsetting that more mobs don't feel the same way I do. I returned home and gathered a lot of my crops since I had a long journey ahead. I made sure to replant them so everyone else would have food while I was gone. Goodbye, Mr. Bale. Please, take care of everyone everyone while I'm gone. On days 45 to 46, I was traveling on my way to the Badlands, passing through a meadow when a flock of geese frantically approached me. The geese told me that up ahead a monster's running wild and attacking more of them. I know that the Badlands can wait. I never walk away from helping a creature in need. I set off further into the meadow to find this mob. Suddenly, a fireball landed in front of me. It was the creature the geese had talked to me about, and he looked extremely powerful. I did my best to dodge the fireballs, but he shot so many of them. I used my sonic boom to attack him at range and knock any of the fireballs that came my way. I used more sonic boots and down he went. <laughs> No problem, guys. It's just something I do. Why don't you come back home and live with me at my cave base? <laughs> I then continued on my journey toward the Badlands. On days 47 to 50, I finally made it to the Badlands. Whoa, there finally seems to be no mobs here that need to be saved. I was just starting to admire the terracotta when the fire deer showed up. Fozo, I figured I would find you here. You again, the monster responsible for so much destruction in this world. What could you possibly want? I was protecting my ancient secrets. But now you're in my way. The fire deer charged at me. He launched beams of light at me that dealt quite a bit of damage. But I was much stronger than I was days ago. I fought back against him, attacking him with my sonic boom and diamond sword. This is not possible. How did you become so powerful? The deer seemed so weak, so I charged at him to deliver the final blow. The boss will need to hear about this. He vanished. No, I almost had him. I was so close to taking him out once and for all. I started making my way deeper into the Badlands, but I stopped to collect a lot of terracotta. I knew that it would look great on my base and would be the perfect use of details on my statue. The only thing I'll need is some black dye. On days 51 to 53, I arrived at the temple in the Badlands. It was enormous. I entered in the temple and could quickly sense I was not alone. A group of the undead attacked me. They were tough in numbers, but at this point, I was feeling invincible, having nearly defeated the fire deer. I fought them off with ease since my sonic boom was an incredible ranged attack. They stood no chance. I looked all over the temple, but was unable to find the golden eye. I did find several chests, though. They had some gold and other nice loot in them. I think this gold is gonna look great on my base as an accent. Finally, I found it. Sitting in the last room. The golden eye. That is definitely what the witch asked me to find. I grabbed it quickly and prepared for a trap. Huh. I guess that only really does happen in the movies. I made my way out of the temple and back across the Badlands. I stopped along the coast to find squid for my black dye. I wasn't able to find any of them. I went into the water and searched everywhere. Huh. Where are they all at? Soon, I was attacked by a giant squid. The giant squid grabbed me and pulled me everywhere under the water, but I was able to overpower it with my sword and sonic boom. Take that. As he was slain, he dropped tons of ink sacks. This is going to be perfect for the details on my statue. On days 54 to 56, I returned to my base. I decided to make my doorway out of gold blocks I found in the temple. Next, I decided to take the time to add some of the undyed terracotta to it. Sweet. This is definitely my kind of vibe. Before I head off to the witch's hut, I figured it was best to find some more diamonds and craft a full set of diamond armor. I spent some time in the caves and was able to find enough diamonds to finish my set of armor. Nice. Now this is what I'm talking about. When I returned to my base, there was an undead fire mob attacking it. There was fire everywhere. Hey, what are you doing? Get out of here. I jumped into action and with my new shiny armor and overpowered abilities, he was no match for me at all. I quickly repaired the animal shelters that had been destroyed and then started working on my statue. It was turning out great. I mean, look at it. I added some of the new blocks I got to give the nice details on it. Wow, it really starting to look like me. I wouldn't want to mess with this base. That's for sure. On days 57 and 59, I was traveling to the witch's hut when I saw a group of pillagers standing around a poor cow. Hey, you big bullies, leave them alone. I shot my sonic boom next to them. I took out almost all of them. The last one went running for the hills. I ran up to the cow and asked him if he was all right. 
Well, I know just the place for you then. I gave him the coordinates for my base and told him to bring himself and his family back there. I'll protect him. He thanked me and I carried on to the witch's hut. I arrived there and I gave her the golden eye. She told me the only thing she needed was some obsidian, but she was too afraid of the caves to get it herself. I headed down into the caves and started to mine some of the obsidian for her. When I finished collecting as much as she needed, I started to head out. On my way out, I encountered a huge wave of the undead demons. They attacked me in numbers, but that was their mistake. I had full diamond armor, so I took almost no damage from them. One sonic boom and down they went. I returned to the witch's hut and gave her the obsidian she needed. Okay, now hold still. This will only hurt a little bit. Hey, well, what are you doing? Ah! I then started to feel r really woozy and I blacked out. On days 60 to 62, I woke up. Where am I? I was in an area I've never seen before and standing in front of me was a giant hand with an eye in it? Uh, hello? Hello, Fuzo. I have been waiting for you. How do you know my name? I know all about you. I gave you your sight so you could see the world. I am your eyes. You gave me my sight? Why? You are the golden one that you were chosen to destroy the Night King. You needed to see the good in the world so that you can live out your destiny. So the legends are true then. Everything that I've heard up to this point, the prophecy, all of it, it's true. You will either save us all or destroy the world. The choice is up to you. I want to save the world, but I'm not sure what to do. The hand offered to train me. He told me that he would teach me everything that I needed to know. In his first wave of training, he sent a bunch of flying eyeballs around me. Oh god, I wasn't expecting a fight. I went in and fought them. They were strong, but I was stronger. I had to think about my mom. I had to do this for her. And with that in mind, I took them out. Good. Now you are ready for the final test. Final test? What's that? Before I can say anything, he turned into a fist and lunged at me. It let out a huge explosion. Wow. He was incredibly powerful, and his hits did a ton of damage. I used my sonic boom ability on him, but I had to hit him in the eye directly. He then started shooting a laser at me. It caused some serious damage. When he charged me, I landed a nice strike right on his eye. He suddenly stopped. Fuzo, you have done well. Take this. In a flash of light, I was granted another 50 hearts. The last thing you need is to find the three remaining warning items. You already have the pickaxe, and you will now have to find the rest in order to defeat the Night King. On days 63 to 65, I woke up in the witch's hut. I told her about my journey and what I had seen. I asked her if she had any idea where I could find one of those items that the hand had talked about. Yes, of course. I heard the sword he is speaking of is in the tundra. Sword? Wow, that would be so sweet to have my own very ancient sword. I thanked the witch and head off towards my base. When I returned home, I was feeling on top of the world. First thing I decided to do was add rooms for the cows who had come back to my base. I built them a nice little enclosure. Then I worked on Mr. Bale's room and expanded it more for him. Ah, thanks, Fozo. I love it. You're the best. No problem, Mr. Bale. You've been such a good company this entire adventure. Finally, I collected more food as I knew I was going to have a long journey ahead of me. On days 66 to 68, I journeyed into the tundra. A few steps into it, a stray jumped out ready to attack me. <laughs> He ran away incredibly fast. Guess being this strong has its perks now. Nothing really wants to mess with me. My victory was short-lived, and he definitely wanted to mess with me. I heard you almost defeated my minion. Prepare to die. I knew the hand and witch told me I needed the ancient items to defeat him, but I felt so powerful already. I started to fight him with everything I had, including my sonic boom. The Night King was barely phased by my attacks. <laughs> Pathetic golden warden. None of this can even harm me. Soon, they will no longer exist and the world will be overrun by my minions. You will all be destroyed. I realized I was in over my head and I was quickly losing hearts. I ran as fast as I could, hoping to lose him in the snow. I finally thought I lost him when I ran into a polar bear. Uh, hello, Mr. Bear. I'm really not in the mood to fight. Do you know an ice temple close by? I need to retrieve something from it. Thank you. Uh, have a great day. I then continued on my journey north. On days 69 to 71, I made it to the ice temple. It was a massive structure in the middle of the tundra. I ran inside and began to search for the sword that the witch spoke of. While inside, I encountered an undead mob and had to battle. The creature was fierce, but not as fierce as what I had fought. He fired projectiles at me that were easy to dodge, but if they hit me, they did a ton of damage. I was able to overpower him with my sonic boom and diamond sword. I continued my search for the ancient sword, making sure to loot the chest that I found inside as well. Inside the chests were more 
more golden blocks. Finally, I found it. The ancient warden sword. Wow, look at this thing. I couldn't wait to use it on the Night King, but I knew I had to collect the other items first. I traveled back to my base and showed off my sword to Mr. Bale. Look sweet, Fozo. Thanks, buddy. On days 72 to 74, I woke up and went to talk to Mr. Bale, but I was unable to find him. I searched all over the base. Where could he have gone? I asked one of the sheep if he had seen him. I quickly rushed outside and saw the area totally on fire. Mr. Bale was in the center of the flames. Oh no, Mr. Bale, I'm coming. I tried to get to him, but before I could, a blaze attacked him and killed him. No, Mr. Bale, how could you do that to such a kind creature, you monster? I fought the blaze off and took him down. What was this guy doing in the overworld? The Night King's power has to be getting stronger. I mourn the loss of my friend. I returned to the base and decided to create a small straw golem monument in his honor. He deserved it. Mr. Bale, I'm never gonna forget you. You're the one that taught me to be selfless. On days 75 to 77, I was still feeling very down about the loss of my friend. To clear my head, I decided to work on my base. I added the golden blocks that I found in the temples. This really helped create a nice golden field. I then upgraded the shelters for all the animals so they would feel more at home despite living in the cave. After I was finished with the base, one of the cows approached me. <laughs> I quickly gathered some of my things and set off on a journey. I wanted to make sure I avenged Mr. Bale. As I entered the dark forest, I was attacked by more undead mobs. Oh my gosh, what are these things? And why are they spinning this fast? I fought them off and took them down. Wow, that was weird. I then wandered farther into the forest to find his base. On days 78 to 80, I reached the fire deer's base. It was a spooky structure, but I was not afraid of anything now that I had required my warden sword. I entered and confronted the fire deer in the main room. You'll pay for what you've done, you know that? Especially for taking Mr. Bale. Oh, Fozo, you have no idea what I'm capable of. I will take all your friends and you. The fire deer charged at me. I had to jump out of the way to avoid him. It is my destiny to save this world. It is your destiny to die. He shot his beams of light at me, which dealt some serious damage, but I had way too much strength for him to take down. I used my sonic boom to get him at range, and then when he charged, I would use my warden sword to fight him. The fire deer was defeated. I did it. That is for Mr. Bale. Since I was here, I decided to loot his chest and take whatever supplies I could find. Most of it was junk, but then I found it. The Warden Shield. This must be why he was attacking the Wardens and was in the ancient city all those days ago. He knew if I found these items, I would become too powerful for him or his boss to handle. But guess what? I found it. On days 81 to 85, I made my journey to the Witch's Hut in hopes she knew where I could find the final item. Along the way, I was attacked by a group of feral wolves. They actually hurt quite a bit. Oh no, the Night King is spreading his power and these mobs are getting stronger. I defeated them, but I knew that I had to defeat the Night King soon. Otherwise, I'm not gonna last much longer. I arrived at the witch's hut, and I told her about the shield and asked her if she knew where I can find the final item. Of course I know where the last item is. Look, you found the shield all by yourself. I could have told you where that was as well. Why wouldn't you have told me that when I asked? Well, you asked if I knew where one of the items was. I told you where to find one. Us witches are very literal. Oh, brother. Can you just tell me where to find the final item then? The last item is on a faraway island. You'll know when you reach it by the mushrooms. I thanked the witch, despite her games, and crafted myself a boat to start making my journey towards the mushroom island. On days 86 to 90, I arrived at the mushroom biome. I'd never seen anything like this before, and it was filled with giant mushrooms and mushroom cows. I decided it would be best to ask one of the mushrooms if they knew where to find the item. I thanked the cow and headed toward the other island. When I arrived, I was attacked by a massive mob. He seemed to have a lot of health and dealt a lot of damage. A uh, warden? I have been waiting for this day for quite some time. I used my sonic boom to weaken him and even blocked his attacks with my new warden shield. Once he was weakened, I charged at him with my sword and delivered the final blow. I entered his cave and opened the chest and hoped that he had what I was looking for. And he did. An ancient warden bow. Now I had everything I needed to defeat the Night King. I went outside and saw it was getting darker. This was the perfect time to test out my bow. I started fighting the skeletons and zombies that had spawned on the island, protecting the mushrooms. Wow, this bow is really overpowered. On days 91 and 94, I returned to my base to prepare for what would hopefully be my final confrontation with the Night King. But when I arrived, my base was under attack by all kinds of monsters. There were so many of them, and they were destroying my home and killing my friends. I had worked so hard to save them. I started to try and lure them away from my friends as best as I could. I shot arrows at them to make them focus on me. When they were within range, I used both my 
my Sonic Boom and Warden Sword to deliver the final blows. I went into my base to make sure everyone was all right. The base was in ruins, and I knew that this had to be an attack by the Night King to scare me off. Most of my friends managed to survive the fight, but all the deers had been killed. I knew these attacks were not going to stop unless I took out that king. I spent the rest of the days building back my base, along with the shelters for the animals. On days 95 to 98, I went into my mines one last time and collected as much iron and diamonds as I could. I knew in the next few days I was going to have to fight the Night King, and in case the base was attacked, I needed my friends to be prepared to fight back as well. I realized that my weapons were powerful. I also knew that I needed to make some enchants. I didn't have the materials for a bookshelf, so I went to a village and asked the villager if he would want to trade. He told me that he would let me take all of his bookshelves if I gave him 64 emeralds. 64 emeralds? What a ripoff! I guess I'm gonna have to set off to the mines. It took me a while, but I was able to make the trade, and the villager was happy. I took my bookshelves and headed home. I took the iron and diamonds and crafted as many pieces of armor and swords as I could. I set up my enchantment table and enchanted all the items that the lapis I'd found on day 9. I then went around to all my friends and gave them the armor and swords. Finally, I said goodbye to each of them and told them I would return once I defeated the Night King. Goodbye, everyone. I will miss you all. On day 99, I was waiting for the sunrise, but it's not coming up. I journeyed back into the Arctic, where I originally found the Night King's Tower. I was more prepared than ever to fight him. I could feel my power had grown so strong, and now that I had my ancient warden weapons, there was nothing he could do to stop me. When I arrived at the base of this temple, I saw that there were strays guarding the tower. There were so many of them. I began to fight all of them. They were so strong. I had to use all my weapons to make my way to the top. This was already a challenge enough. I couldn't imagine getting to the actual Night King. As I was close to the top, I was attacked by ice demons. They were so much stronger than the strays. I had to pull out my bow. There we go. That's much better. Night King, here I come. On day 100, I reached the top of the Night King's temple and confronted him. Your reign ends here now, Night King. I am more powerful than you will ever be. And look at that. I used my powers for good. You seem to have some fancy new toys, but you still are no match for my true power. There's nothing that's gonna stop me. You're too late. And now, it's time you die. Luckily, I was able to block most of his attacks with my shield. This is not possible. I am the strongest mob. I could sense he knew he was outmatched, so I focused my attacks on him and started to drain his health. My bow did massive damage to him, and he was growing weaker and weaker. No, no, I cannot be stopped. This is for my mom. I delivered the final hit to him with my bow, and look at that. It's back to daytime. I saved the world.